Hello everyone, this is 3DX. In today's video I'm going to be creating a stylized fantasy looking uh, wall material using Substance Designer. And for the most part I'm going to be using a lot of the techniques that I've been using for in many of the other videos that I have made. So that's one thing you're going to find out with Substance Designer is that you once you know uh, for the most part what some of the notes do you're going to find that you're going to be using a lot of them um, in very similar ways and that's essentially what i do i once i find a good workflow i typically start just reusing a lot of the same notes and i find that i um, used a lot of the same notes for a lot of things so and which is why I think it's one of the reasons why Substance Designer doesn't have that many nodes. Uh, like there are a good amount of nodes, but for the most part, uh, it doesn't overdo it in giving you way too many options. And the reason for that is obviously because you can get a lot done and get a lot of different variation from the nodes that come with Substance Designer. Which is why I think it's pretty good to just kind of learn and practice with a few different things a few different materials and once you get the hang of it you can start to you'll see the patterns on what notes to use for what exactly and obviously there's always some experimentation as well that goes into creating different materials so um, one question that i get a lot is is how to use the materials that you create in substance designer like for example, like for an actual practical use of the, of the materials. So typically how I use them in a production setting is I use Substance Designer primarily to create wall textures or floor textures. So, you know, like anything from dirt, uh, from the ground dirt to tiles on the floor or any pattern that you would use for the ground. Uh, that's usually how I use it and on walls as well it can be um, for organic walls or for hard surface stuff as well so that's usually how I use Substance Designer I do know that a lot of people also use it for uh, for props like for example they make a lot of different materials which you can apply in, subs in something like a Substance Painter and that's how they apply, that's how they use Substance Designer as well. I don't particularly use it that way, um, but I can totally see uh, the use uh, for that. And other people just use them um, for props, but not by importing to Substance Painter, but just as actual textures, uh, which you can map to uh, on a prop. So something like a something like a trim texture. Uh, I've seen people use it like that to create trim textures, which you can apply to a prop. And once you have a trim texture, you can pretty much um, set your UVs so that they use specific areas of that trim texture. So that's one use that I've seen for Substance Designer. Like I said, I primarily use it for for the creation of ground textures and wall textures. I haven't really used it a lot for props but it's probably something that I will probably start doing more often as well so that's mainly the main use I think for Substance Designer and obviously the main one of the main reasons people use it is because you can get a lot of different uh, looking materials really quickly and the nature of the procedural generation of materials is what I think most people like about Substance Designer uh, including uh, myself included so being able to uh, change the look of a material on the fly I think that makes it really great because if you were to do something like that would say ZBrush like let's say you created a texture you sculpted a texture but then you apply it to your environment or prop and then it doesn't really look the way you were hoping you know, you will have to re-sculpt it. 
which would probably take more time than if you just uh, updated a few nodes in something like Substance Designer. So that's the main use of Substance Designer is to be able to um, do changes to a material or texture uh, relatively quickly and without having to re-sculpt anything. It also allows you to change colors really easily as well. So because everything is procedural, you don't have to, uh, you know, manually change the colors of things. So it's really easy to just experiment with shapes and colors, which is what I like about this program a lot. Is that you, that's a lot of, it makes it really easy to experiment with different looks. And if you have it connected to something like Unreal Engine where you can just export your material and preview it real time in Unreal, uh, it's really great because you can change parameters and see it in real time. And I think it just makes it easier to come up with good looking textures and faster as well, if you know what you're doing, of course. Obviously, when you're just starting to learn how to use Substance, it's, it's gonna take a little bit longer to create a material that's interesting and uh, but once you get the hang of it and you know what you're doing I think it's a lot faster than say using ZBrush to create a material for example and the nice thing is that you can actually combine it with ZBrush as well if you wanted to like you could create shapes in ZBrush export them as a height map and have them separate and then just apply them uh, scatter them around with Substance Designer so I just wanted to answer that question because I always get that uh, question, people asking what the use for Substance Designer is. And that's usually how it's used. Now obviously there are people that have created really elaborate uh, materials and just things that sometimes you can go overboard and uh, make things that are not practical. but. Uh, but for the most part, I think if you use it to create ground textures, wall textures, or trim textures, I think you're, that's a pretty safe way to use it, really. Uh, but that's pretty much all I wanted to talk about in this video. And obviously I created this stylized uh, texture here. I will probably use this as a wall texture in a kind of fantasy stylized type of uh, environment. Or game but this one was relatively simple uh, as you may have noticed I used a lot of the same nodes that I used uh, for the most part uh, which usually is the tile sampler and blends as well as the height map blend as well and so I usually try to keep it really simple when it comes to stylized textures. And this one was no different. Uh, so here is the render in Marmoset Toolback. And uh, if you like this video, make sure you hit the like button. If you're new to the channel, don't forget to sub. And hopefully I'm going to see you in a future video. Do you want to learn how to use Substance Designer to create interesting materials which you can use to apply to things like environments or props? Well, in this intro to Substance Designer tutorial, Anthony Carmona will walk you through the process on how to get started in making materials in Substance Designer. Click on the link below now to start learning how this is done. Anthony will start you off by explaining the theory behind physically based rendering and from there he will show you the ropes to get started with the most useful nodes found within Substance Designer. This is a perfect tutorial for anyone who is new to Substance and would like to learn how to get started. This tutorial also includes a bonus lesson where Anthony will show you how to present a material through lighting and rendering using Marmoset Toolbag. Hey, so this is a very short video ad, so there's not enough time to cover everything. Click on the link in the description now to get started.